first of all, I want to thank <clears throat> the AMN Foundation for the opportunity to present uh, our results in this very interesting meeting, and also to thank the Foundation for the support of our work. Uh, this work has been done in collaboration with Dr. Javier Cudero from Complutense University of Madrid and Dr. Leonard Nelson from Edinburgh University, plus other collaborators that will be mentioned at the end of the, of the talk. Uh, my name is Matias Avila, and I will be discussing our uh, work on new epigenetic therapies for experimental cholangiocarcinoma. Okay, uh, cholangiocarcinoma, as needless to say, uh, in front of this audience is a devastating disease, but with in increasing incidence in some areas of the world. And uh, the, the complication of these of this type of tumors uh, involve its late diagnosis, which leads to a poor prognosis and high mortality of the patients. Uh, this type of tumor is very resistant to therapy. You know, when it is uh, uh, found in advanced stages, uh, chemotherapy has uh, little effect and is mostly applied in a palliative uh, uh, setting. And uh, actually, there are targeted therapies uh, uh, that are uh, currently being uh, uh, investigated and with some promising results but still uh, not optimized. Uh, uh, as according to the uh, uh, anatomical origin of the tumor, we, we can differentiate uh, different subtypes that occur along the biliary tract inside or outside the liver. And this uh, device anatomical origin is also related to the differential cell and histological properties of the tumor that are accompanied also by a high molecular heterogeneity uh, uh, inter and intra uh, tumor. Uh, over the past decades or so, uh, big efforts have been dedicated to characterize uh, the uh, genetic profile of these tumors. And again, here, a number of more prevalent mutations have been identified that are more or less segregated uh, you, you know, along the different uh, anatomical sites of the tumor presentation. This uh, molecular characterization has uh, a key uh, a role in the understanding of the biology of the disease and the identification of potential therapeutic targets. Uh, <clears throat> many genetic alterations uh, mostly affecting tumor suppressor genes like P53 or uh, genes involved in, six, uh, in cell signal, signaling pathways such as KRAS or FVF receptor family members have been well demonstrated to occur in different proportion of these tumors. But there is more and more evidence in the recent years that uh, epigenetic mechanisms can be also altered or, or affected uh, uh, from earlier stages of the development of these type of tumors. Uh, these uh, include mutations in, 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 in genes involved in different as aspects of epigenetic uh, uh, control of gene expression, including uh, DNA uh, modification and also histone covalent modification. Uh, some of these mutations can affect uh, the activity of these epigenetic effectors and uh, as indicated here, interestingly, some of these uh, mutant uh, effectors, epigenetic effectors are amenable to uh, pharmacological inter intervention. This is very interesting because epigenetic modifications are reversibles and therefore could be inhibited with, with small molecules. The best characterized uh, molecular uh, alteration at the level of the, of the epigenome in cholangiocarcinoma are changes in, in DNA methylation. A global DNA methylation has been characterized in tumor cells, but which is accompanied by hypermethylation of a specific regions of the genome, particularly a, a hypermethylation of a tumor promoters uh, sorry, of, of, uh, of uh, gene promoters uh, that are controlling the expression of tumor suppressor genes and also methylation of, of uh, within the body genes that uh, can activate the expression of oncogenes. But we have to bear in mind that the epigenetic mechanisms are very complex and that they are uh, very interactive on, among them. <clears throat> and these uh, intertwined relationships is going to be key to establish the regulation or the regulation of the epigenome. This is illustrated here by the interaction between DNA methyl transferases and histone methyl transferases, such as gene and A. Uh, these two uh, epigenetic effectors collaborate with an adapter protein known as UHRF1 in the establishment of uh, DNA methylation patterns and histone methylation patterns. And this complex has been found to be deregulated in different tumors. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, not only uh, changes in, in, this, in this complex, but also and the activity of gene A by itself can also regulate gene expression. Gene A is going to be the enzyme methylating in lysine 9 of histone 3, uh, uh, incorporating one or two methyl groups. One methylation involved, is involved in gene activation and two methylation steps is involved in gene silencing. 
And uh, with this in mind, and the, this functional interaction between, between these epigenetic effectors, we wanted to, to analyze whether there could be a correlation or an association in their hyper, uh, in their uh, expression in, 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 in cholangiocarcinoma. As you can see here, we first tested the, the mRNA levels of gene and A and different members of the DNA metric transferase family, at, and, as well as the uh, epigenetic adapter UHF1. And we found it elevated uh, in, in, in comparison with normal uh, human cholangiocytes. At the protein levels, we also have um, a, a correlative uh, results, as you can see here, both in, in a significant number of uh, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma samples, we could see a significant uh, upregulation in the protein level of these three effectors uh, in both types or subtypes of, 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 of cholangiocarcinoma. Interestingly, there was a, a nice uh, significant correlation uh, in the expression at the mRNA levels of these three genes. You know, uh, as I said, the, the, the functional interaction between epigenetic effectors suggests that perhaps they, their, uh, uh, their combined inhibition with the small mo molecules could have a better anti-tumoral effect, as has been shown uh, uh, with the individual application of uh, a specific uh, 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 drugs that target these uh, uh, different epigenetic modifiers. So to have a proof of concept of this uh, hypothesis, we uh, took advantage of a series of cholangiocarcinoma cell lines in which we verified the expression of, uh, of the different epigenetic effectors that I have just described. And we did some pharmacological experiments in which we treated the cells uh, in, 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 in the presence of two individual or two independent drugs that target both epigenetic effector. A DNA methyltransferase inhibitor such as the citabin are the gene and A inhibitor BIX01294. As you can see here in these combination studies, uh, different concentrations of both drugs gave a synergistic effect in the growth inhibition. And this is uh, indicated here by having a combination index below one. So after this proof of concept and, and taking advantage of a, a new class of molecules that we have developed in our institution in collaboration with the, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, molecular therapies department, I, I, I introduce here these compounds, which are a first in class dual and reversible inhibitors that uh, simultaneously target gene and A and DNA methyltransferases. Uh, they have a novel or uh, innovative mechanism of action. They are substrate competitive. They compete with the histone and with the DNA, but they do not compete with the methyl donor, which is acenosyl methionine. After a screening of over 200 compounds, we came up with this uh, lead compound known as uh, CM272 that had a very potent uh, and, uh, inhibitory activity towards the, the, the molecular targets in vitro, and that for which we had previously shown uh, effective anti-tumoral capacity, uh, both in hematological malignancies and also in hepatocellular carcinoma. As a first uh, uh, proof of uh, uh, evidence of the uh, uh, anti-tumoral activity of our compound, uh, we tested the efficacy against a, a number of cholangiocarcinoma cell lines in vitro. And as you can see here, we got a, a very uh, encouraging GI50 concentrations most of them below one micromolar. This, uh, the drug was very effective also in inhibiting the clonogenic capacity of, of these cell lines. And here below, you can see the on-target effects of the molecule of CN272 on global levels of histone H3 kinase methylation and global DNA methylation. Well, after this uh, initial uh, test, uh, we wanted to move on to a better model of, of, of cholangiocarcinoma still in vitro. And we took advantage of a collaboration with the Dr. Medichel Huch from Dresden in Germany. And she had established what could be called uh, a tumoroids uh, obtained from cholangiocarcinoma, from primary cholangiocarcinoma of patients. These tumoroids uh, uh, maintain all the molecular and, and, and cellular characteristics of the tumor of origin and can be cultivated and, and they can be used as, uh, for pharmacological studies. As you can see here, we first tested the expression of the three epigenetic modifiers against which we are acting with your molecule, gene and A, DMNT1, and UHF1, and we found that these three genes were upregulated, were induced in the tumoroid compared to control uh, organoids obtained from healthy cholangiocytes. It is shown here that when these tumoroids were treated with 
CN272, the road was uh, significantly inhibited. And interestingly, when instead of tumorous, we, we used healthy organoids, we did not see any toxic effect against these healthy uh, uh, structures. So to gain some, uh, to begin gaining some uh, mechanistic insights, we went on to test the effect of or molecular or compound on the expression of genes that are uh, typically uh, silenced by epigenetic mechanisms in cholangiocarcinoma. And we looked uh, in particular to two of these genes, SOX17 and RASFA1, because both of them are considered as tumor suppressor genes. As you can see here, when we treated uh, different cell lines uh, with our compound, we could uh, reduce the expression of these uh, uh, tumor suppressor genes in, in cholangiocarcinoma cells. Okay, next step, we wanted to have some uh, evidence of the potential effect uh, of our molecule in vivo. You know, there are no perfect uh, cholangiocarcinoma models in, in uh, available now. So we started with a more classic uh, um, xenograft models in which we implanted uh, uh, cholangiocarcinoma cells either subcutaneously or orthotopically uh, in the liver of, of mice. And uh, after these tumors grew, we started uh, treating the mice with the drug. And as you can see here, we saw some uh, good signs of efficacy in these uh, subcutaneous or orthotopic xenografts. Uh, this effect was further confirmed by uh, using a, a patient-derived xenograft uh, cell line, which has been uh, uh, obtained from primary tumors and implanted subcutaneously in mice. And here, the effect of our compound was even uh, more uh, uh, noticeable and, and, and significant. Okay, as I said, it is uh, 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 not easy to find the ideal uh, uh, cholangiocarcinoma uh, model in vivo, and we wanted to, to go one step further and to test our drug in a model in which we had the endogenous development of the tumor in an immune competent environment and also in, 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 in consistent with the presence of liver injury and inflammation in trying to reproduce better the situation in, in, in the clinic. So we took advantage of a model that has been uh, uh, developed also during this collaboration. Uh, uh, and in this case, uh, uh, the knockout of uh, junk uh, uh, genes, junk one and two, junk kinase one and two genes in hepatocytes, in mice hepatocytes, uh, when these mice are treated with uh, uh, the carcinogen diethylnitrosamine uh, at early age, and then at eight weeks of age are treated with the hepatotoxicant carbon tetrachloride twice a week, and these mice are followed up, uh, uh, we could observe consistently the development of uh, macroscopic lesions in the liver of these, of these animals that surprisingly, when we were uh, characterized both histologically and molecularly, instead of resulting in hepatocellular carcinoma, which is what currently develops in, in, in response to the ethylnitrosamine, we saw uh, a histological and molecular features uh, suggesting that uh, these mice develop cholangiocellular carcinoma, cholangiomas are uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, uh, further evidence of the neoplastic nature of these lesions was established when uh, tumors obtained from these mice were orthotopically implanted in a new set of mice, in a new set of immune uh, depressed mice, and all these mice, after 28 weeks, developed tumors in their liver that again, histologically and also molecularly, uh, were compatible with uh, cholangiocarcinoma. So using this model, we went on to test the effect of our compound. As you can see here, uh, we first tested the expression of our molecular targets, uh, GNA, DNMT1, and UHRF1 in the, in the livers of these mice, uh, once uh, the, the tumor where, where uh, the tumors were developed. And uh, as you can see in this scheme, when mice reach 18 weeks of age, uh, at a point where tumors are already uh, present, we started treating uh, with the compound for four weeks. And uh, you can see here at the, uh, both of the macroscopic uh, level, how the development of these uh, uh, um, macroscopic lesions in the surface of, of, of their livers uh, was uh, significantly inhibited. But also histologically, you can see here how the uh, proliferation of these uh, cholangiocarcinoma structures and, 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 and tumors was markedly uh, reduced by the by the treatment, and you can see here the staining with the CK19 and SOX9, but also at the level of different molecular markers, 
uh, uh, that are characteristic of cholangiocarcinoma uh, uh, that are uh, uh, represented here, their upregulation was markedly uh, inhibited by, by the drug. Not only that, we saw also, we observed also a, a significant effect on the expression of different uh, inflammatory cytokines that contribute to con cholangiocarcinogenesis, such as interleukin-6 or TGF-beta-1. So trying to identify or you know, learn something more about the mechanism of action of the antitumoral action of a CM272, we performed some in vitro transcriptomic analysis using cholangiocarcinoma cell lines. And uh, as you can see here, you know, when we analyze the gene expression profile of cells treated with CM272, we, as could be expected, found uh, when we did an uh, ingenuity pathway uh, canonical ingenuity pathway analysis of the canonical pathways, as expected, we, we saw significant changes in the expression of genes related to cell growth, survival, proliferation. And uh, this was confirmed here as, uh, in this part of the slide. Uh, we display the gene set enrichment analysis of the expression of cells, of, of genes related to cell proliferation, their regulation, negative regulation of cell growth, all these. Uh, 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 genes were uh, significantly uh, affected in their expression by, by the compound. But perhaps what captured most our attention were the significant changes that we also noticed on the expression of genes related to cellular metabolism. Uh, different metabolic pathways such as cholesterol metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, and also mitochondrial function, and one carbon metabolism were markedly affected. As you can see here, the gene set enrichment analysis also validating the significant changes of uh, the expression of genes involved in glucose metabolism and, and of oxidative phosphorylation, etc. We wanted to validate these, these uh, transcriptomic findings and uh, we performed some uh, measurements of uh, specific genes uh, that are key to these pathways. As, as you can see here, uh, uh, when we uh, tested some uh, genes important in cholesterol metabolism. We saw the upregulation of uh, cytochrome 7A1, which is the rate limiting uh, uh, codes for the rate limiting uh, enzyme in cholesterol catabolism, the conversion of cholesterol to bile acid. It was markedly upregulated, while the expression of um, the, the rate limiting genes in, in cholesterol synthesis, such as squalene epoxidase, was downregulated by uh, treatment with the drug. These genetic changes were consistent with the reduction of cholesterol levels that we found in uh, uh, cholangiocarcinoma cells treated with the CM272. And uh, as you know, is, is uh, uh, essential the production of cholesterol for the proliferation of tumor cells. Regarding one carbon metabolism, we also saw a significant changes. Genes that are repressed in, in cholangiocarcinoma cells that are involved in, the, in, in methionine metabolism and the synthesis and catabolism of S-adenosyl methionine, such as MAD1A or GNMT. Both genes that are silencing cholangiocarcinoma cells were upregulated, while and, and concomitantly the expression of these three genes that are uh, uh, involved in the, in the so-called setting glycine pathway, which branches off the glycolytic pathway were repressed by the treatment. These genes uh, are, uh, have been shown to be upregulated in, 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 in different types of, uh, of, of tumors and uh, their activation contributes to malignancy. Regarding uh, carbohydrate metabolism, uh, we also uh, saw marked change in key genes that are a part of the so-called Varvur effect or aerobic glycolysis, which is well known that is activated and contributes to tumorigenesis. So we saw a downregulation of the expression of GLUT1, the glucose transporter, downregulation in the expression of the exokinase 2, which is a tumor specific isozyme together with lactate dehydrogenase A. Concomitantly with the downregulation of these three genes, we saw an induction of fructose 1,6 by phosphatase 1. This gene codes for a protein that is a rate limiting in gluconeogenesis, but is not only contributing to the reshaping, you know, towards a differentiated metabolism, a normal metabolism, uh, this uh, FBP1 protein has also been shown to have uh, tumor suppressive uh, activity. These changes were consistent with the and a reprogramming of glucose metabolism. As we can see here, we saw an inhibition of glycolysis uh, upon treatment in different cell lines. 
and uh, changes in the origin of ATP production within these cells with an enrichment of ATP coming from mitochondrial respiration versus ATP coming from glycolysis. In other words, we will, could also somehow reverse the uh, rewiring of a uh, glucose metabolism characteristic of tumors. Okay, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the mechanism of action of, of an epigenetic drug, and in this case of CMT, to, uh, CM272 is likely to be multifarious, uh, different pathways may be involved, but here it was, we just want to highlight the fact that in response to, to this compound and through the inhibition of these uh, epigenetic effectors, we could reactivate the expression of tumor suppressor genes and also reshape the uh, metabolism of, of cholangiac carcinoma cell to a more quiescent and differentiated phenotype, suggesting that this compound could be part of the differentiation therapy for cholangiac carcinoma cells. And I just want to finish uh, thanking all the collaborators from uh, the laboratory in Pamplona and also our external collaborators that are listed here mainly Merichel Hodge, Jesus Bañales from the Biodonostia Institute in San Sebastian, Spain, and as I mentioned before, Drs. Cubero and uh, Leonard Nelson, and I thank you for your attention.